time lapses look really cool, but if all you have is a smartphone, then they cannot turn out so great. I'm going to show you how I went from this to this. And while I thought it would be pretty easy at first, it turned out to be a little more complicated. I'm going to show you the problems I ran into and the solutions and workarounds that I found. Most phones will let you use the volume up button like a shutter button when the camera is open. If you have headphones with volume controls, you can use that like a remote trigger. The Android headset specification has the info we need to figure out how this works. It turns out all you have to do is put a 240 ohm resistor between the ground and microphone pins. Setting up the printer to trigger the camera is pretty straightforward. First we have to enable the CHDK option in Marlin's configuration ADV.h file and choose a pin to send the signal on. Since I'm using a ramps board, I found a diagram of the layout and chose to use Servo 3 since I know I'm not using that for anything else. So I set the pin in Marlin to 5. By default it's set to 4, uh, which is Servo 4, but I'm using that one for my filament runout sensor, thanks to Chris Riley's video. I'll leave a link below to that one. I also increased the delay so the pin will stay high for one second. I'm not sure I needed to do that, but it works. The next step was to design a circuit that would take the signal from the printer and apply the 240 ohms across the two wires of a headphone plug as needed. I'm using a small relay in order to isolate the printer from my phone. I didn't want to run the risk of one device killing the other. I cut a headphone cable from a broken pair and tested my design on a breadboard. You can see here the first photo taken with my device. I know, pretty exciting, isn't it? I then soldered the components to a perf board. The next step was to hook it up to the printer and send the M240 command via printerface. The only problem is, it didn't work. The pin Bam. diagram shows the servos all have signal, 5 volt, and ground pins. The only thing is, the 5 volt pins aren't actually connected to anything. If I had paid better attention to Chris's video, I would have known that. It's not a big problem though. On the other side of the reset button, there's a pin that does have the promised 5 volts, so I just ran a jumper from that pin to Servo 1's 5 volt pin, and that powered all of them. This also makes the LED in the end stop I'm using for my filament runout sensor work, where it previously didn't. Pretty cool side effect. And once I got that hooked up, you can see here the first picture taken directly from my printer. Yay, progress. Then I added G-code to Slicer to park the nozzle and snap a photo on layer change, since Cura doesn't have an easy way to do this. More on that in a little bit. Then I set up a print in the camera, only to find a new issue. The camera app closes after three minutes of no activity. I needed to find an app that keeps the phone on and, more importantly, takes photos when you press the volume button. After testing about three or four apps, I found Stop Motion Studio, which works pretty much on all devices. Here you can see my first attempt. I didn't think to add a pause for the camera to actually snap the photo, so it didn't turn out too great, but it's already much better than before. You can see in my next two prints how adding a pause really makes a difference. This was a raven skull I printed for my wife. It turned out pretty neat. These are the supports for that. Now I've not had very good results from Slick 3R on this machine, and this print right here actually fails. And after this one failed, I decided to bite the bullet and look in how to add this option to Cura. Being a programmer, this is probably the easiest part for me. I created a post-processing script to add the functionality. And here you can see the final results. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. I'll put a link to the script in the description, but I've also created a pull request to have it added to the Cura mainline. Hopefully it will be part of the standard install eventually. Well, thanks for watching.